Taco Bell. That's absolutely right. Good morning, I'm Reverend Lori Sheets. So glad that you're here spending some time with us in this uh, most precious holiday season. The Community Resource Center, which is one of our uh, 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 community resources that we work with, they are in need of both blankets and there is a table in the back, and also a food stuff, and there's a baker's rack in the back. And then I heard in between that we also need uh, to have warm coats, extra large, warm coats, extra large. So we really enjoy supporting this particular center. Celebrating the Christmas day together as a seaside Sam family has uh, long been a wonderful tradition. We're looking today for one person or two people who are able to plan this Christmas day lunch. Um, Vivian Chandler, who has done it for years, is not able to do it. And yet, of course, the desire to have this lunch. So you're thinking of lunch for 60 people, please see me, Reverend Christian. We'd really like to keep this uh, lunch going. The Drumming in the Light, which is on the 21st, is coming up. We're celebrating the darkest night of the year, the solstice, and that will be here. Lots of drumming. Christine Stevens will be leaving it, leading it. December 21st at 7 o'clock p.m. The singles are having a happy hour on December 21st at Swami's Cafe. Please sign up in the table and uh, wear red. I just made that up. I wanted to put my, my signature on it. Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we are gathering together to celebrate uh, Reverend Tammy Miller and her amazing grace service before she passes the torch to a Reverend Sunshine Day at the beginning of the year. So I know all of us have really enjoyed that Wednesday night service and it would certainly be a tribute to Tammy to come and celebrate that. If you are interested in getting the wreaths, wreaths, did I say that right? I don't, wreaths, round, bow. You can sponsor a teen and help them go to camp and their uh, information is in the youth and family ministry as well. Without further ado, because I like where I work and I didn't want to get fired, but I do want to talk about <laughs> Joyous Living Journal. Those are for sale. They make wonderful gifts. This is the book that is going to lead us next year so that we're all on the same page. And Dr. Christian is going to be signing books out there today, so please um, plan to get it. It's, uh, it's fabulous. So. And now, please stand and join and greet your neighbor. Please remain standing for our congregational song. This morning we're singing Angels We Have Heard on High. Gloria. Yeah.
Good, guys. Hey, good morning, Seaside. Oh, what a joy it is to be with you in this holiday season and to sing glory. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. No. Just warming up for next Sunday night's candlelight service where I get to lead all the songs on whatever key I want. All right? <laughs> I don't think Fran will let me. <clears throat> but... Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Hey, I just want to welcome anybody who may be here for the first time today. Your presence is very special to us. Know that Seaside is an open and a welcoming and affirming spiritual community that honors you wherever you may be on your spiritual path. Seaside is a spiritual nexus inspiring people to live their dreams, and we are here to support and to care and and nurture uh, one another on our spiritual path. So your presence today makes a difference as to what today is going to be like, which I trust will be a service of awe. And to really set the tone and get us going to that deeper place is our practitioner, Sharon De Leon. So I just invite you to close your eyes. as we move into the stillness. I rejoice. I rejoice for this is the day that God hath made. I rejoice in its allness, its fullness, its oneness. I rejoice for everyone that has said yes, had yes said yes to the service, has said yes to being in community. I rejoice.
I am filled with gratitude. And so I speak my word of blessing for this service. I speak my word of thanksgiving. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Christian. I'm grateful for the spiritual leader at Seaside. I'm grateful to knowing that he is that clear vessel, that channel through which spirit moves through and expresses as he shares his talk with us today. I speak my word of blessing knowing that all is well. And I'm grateful. And so it is. Prayer by practitioner Sharon DeLeon. How many people are busy this time of year? <laughs> I want to share something that I've been doing. Two words. Oh, yes, I am a princess. I couldn't do this. Oh, oh I'll never remember. <laughs> Uh, two words that have been serving me, and I want you to say them with me after you take a big breath. It's take a big breath and then ease. Say ease. Doesn't that feel good? And now another big deep breath and kindness. Now, I came up with kindness after I cut off this lady in Costco. <laughs> I thought. My reading today is from Joyous Living Journal. So go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to read and then go into prayer. And uh, stay mindful through this reading. It's entitled, Beached. From time to time, whales and dolphins somehow end up beaching themselves. Why do they do it? Only they know what drives them on this suicide mission. As people come from all over to save them, a little water splashed on their drying skin is refreshing. It's helpful and it's nice. But a little moisture is not going to turn their lives around. The only thing that will save them is to get them back into the water 
There is no alternative. In your life, you hear all sorts of nice spiritual phrases and well-meaning words that may be inspiring and refreshing. There are doctrines and creeds others will encourage you to adhere to. But the one thing that turns your world around is returning to the source of life itself. There are no other substitutes. The key to a spiritual life is spirit itself, not the words around it. So please join me in prayer. Coming fully present to this place and this time, knowing that the place to go for our guidance, for our love, for our wisdom is within. That we must immerse ourselves in our own wisdom. Knowing that the loving presence of God is a God that is good, that is magnificent, that is in awe. There is nothing that the loving presence of God, the beloved, cannot do, cannot guide, cannot willingly allow us to see. What a joy. What a joy at this season to recognize this magnificence that we have known each and every day of this year. I am anchored in that feeling, in that love, in that joy, knowing that I am served and serving the beloved, and that is all that I want to do. Grateful for that and so much more, I simply say, and so it is. My privilege to welcome Michael Paul Smith to our stage. I'm over here, but would you please join us in a big re uh, ovation response for Michael Paul Smith. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a joy to be here at Seaside. Is that okay? Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, I bid you greetings from Northern California. Some of you know where Los Angeles is. Uh, and uh, it's always a pleasure to be here with you at Seaside and uh, to share in this, this wonderful sea time of the year. This is my favorite time of the year. Anyway, let's have a lot of fun today and, and get some marvelous blessings. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I've heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds they're far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops That's where you're gonna find me Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Birds fly, yes, oh The rainbow, why, then, oh, why 
can't I? Job. I don't think I've ever been standing to the rendition of Over the Rainbow before. <laughs> Had me moving. That was good. Thank you. All right. Um, you know, I'm just going to jump right in it. Um, our nation was shocked on Friday as um, the shootings took place in our schools. It, it was just heartbreaking, excruciating, something that should not happen, you know, in our nation or anywhere. And it came to realize it's not their kids that it happened to, it's our kids. That it happened to. It was our kids. And even though we're not there, I don't know, for myself, I, mean, I could feel the gunshot. I could hear the gunshot within, in my heart and soul. And I haven't seen one stitch of TV media about the event, but I'll tell you, I have been impacted. It's been on the internet, it's been on Facebook. I did a baptism here on Saturday morning. The parents just have a great concern for their new child going into the world. And, and what I you know, sat with and, and thought about is how connected. We are. We are all inseparable. And for such a, a horrendous act, something like that to happen, there has to be such a, a pain of disconnect, a sense of separation from humanity, a sense of separation from God that, that, that for whatever reason created that kind of act, that sense of separation, because in that sense of connectedness, one would never perpetuate that kind of experience, that, that kind of um, outreach. And so what I work on myself is going through my anger, my hurt, my pain, so I can get to a place of remembering who I am. And only as I can remember who I am that I can begin to remember who they are, whoever they is, the perpet the perpetrators. If I can remember who I am, I can begin to remember who they are and see that presence of God even in, um, in their face. Because that shakeup is felt deep. Um, you know, it is just coinciding with the darkest time in North America. You know, it is the darkest time of the year and today happens to be the last day of of Hanukkah, which is a celebration of the Festival of Lights. Um, the Maccabees you know, went back to their temple, a place that was good, and the light that was there was sufficient. The light that was there was enough. The untainted oil, that part that had not been 
um, violated was enough. And what's important to remember, I believe, in my life, in those darkest moments, that if I can go back to that temple of good, that place that is inside of me, that part that has untainted, that has not been violated, and remember that God is enough and that what I get to be is a light, that I get to bring to this world a remembrance that God is omnipresent, which means God is everywhere. If God is infinite, that means it is right there in the midst of of Connecticut. It's right there in the midst of that shooting. Even though it is extremely difficult to see, I'm willing to be a light and say, you know what, God is there. Let's look for it. I do not know where it is leading, but what I know is that spirit must emerge here somehow and that I'm going to be one who is at least looking for God there while others may be pointing fingers. I think that um, it's a very important time to have a conversation with our children. So any parents, godparents, grandparents, our children are searching. It's imperative that we don't have that news looping and repeating itself in the background in our house, playing images over and over so we're not bombarding their mind and their, their psyche with, with what is going on out there because they'll know. I'll tell you, Monday morning when they go to school, they will know what is going on, which is why it is so important for you to have a conversation with them before then. Because our children are influenced by you. And if you can talk about the love, you can talk about the in, how we're all connected, or whatever it is that the child wants to talk about, and ask them what it is that they feel. Not tell them what to feel and not tell them how to think because so often our kids are just given the image that those guys are monsters. And the concept of monsters, whether it's a cliche or what, it only feeds the fear. It doesn't equip them to deal with the challenges that are out there in the world to sit down honestly and say, hey, I don't have the answer, but I'm sitting here searching. I don't have the answer for you, but what I'm doing is giving you some of my thoughts so after day you can go home and talk them over and, and take them to a deeper level. But what I know about our children, what I have read, a statistic that says our children by the age of 18 will have watched on television or other medias over 200,000 acts of violence. No wonder this kind of stuff is popping out. It's no wonder that it is outpicturing. It is said that children between the ages of 8 and 16 in America, 56% of them have TVs in their room. And you know what, I won't say what parent hasn't. I have at times given Trevor a DVD and you know, as a babysitter to go watch for a couple hours, give me free time or let him watch YouTube and who knows for sure exactly what he's watching just to give me a break. But how often have parents allowed that to move on. And so what is imperative, I feel, at this time is that we reinterpret what has taken, taken place and realize that we are aligning at this time on the planet with the planetary movement um, on the 21st. There is a big happening here at Seaside where it's a three-day celebration. We start off with the winter solstice and the drumming, and um, it is supposedly the end of the Mayan calendar, the fractal time of 5,125 years when everything lines up and it moves into the next fractal time of 5,125. Years. So if we make it past the 21st, we got another 5,125 years we're good for. And, and there's big celebrations going on around the, the globe on, on Saturday. You can tune in to them. Barbara Marks Hubbard's already down in Australia, ready to be the, the first dawn of the new day. It's called Birth 2012 that is going on here. What we get to do is reinterpret what is emerging here because the talk is that there is crisis that precedes um, a transformation. That the crisis and problems are the evolutionary drivers to come forth and bring forth a new world. It is time for a new shift and a birth of a new way of being upon this planet. Our media feeds us those things that are wrong that are out there for the most part. I mean, not all of it, but for the most part, that is what is fed. And do you know 99% of what is going on in the world is good? Do you know that there are answers for our energy, zero-point energy, where we could propel our automobiles without fossil fuel, but we don't look at that? Do you know that there are answers for the global warming available? to us now, that there are answers for the monetary situations and for war, and yet that's not what we're focusing on. And so this birth of 2012, we can stand in awe of the possibility and reinterpret the pain and the dark moment and hold a light and say, you know what? I'm going to take a stand in this world. I'm going to take a stand that when there is a crisis like that, I'm going to love deeper. I'm going to say, where is God here? And I'm going to believe in an eternal life and know that we will be led by the children and that these children didn't die in vain, but rather that they are the 
spiritual leaders for the birth of this new way of being upon this planet. Now, wouldn't you be in awe if we had a shift like that take place? Yes, it is, this awe is a revelation. It is impact. It is a mix of emotions. It is a reverence. It is a, it is a fear. It is an awesomeness that we begin to see. Uh, you know, awe is like there is a power that is so great, like a huge waves crashing against the, uh, the cliffs or a huge thunder of a waterfall. And that you stand there and you just feel the power and stand in awesome wonder of the presence of God and its ability to be and to know that each one of us is that point in which that same awesomeness uh, can be released into the world. Yeah. Ernest Holmes said, Approach the science mind with awe, but not with fear. For all the profound thinkers have stood in awe of life itself. And what he said about pain and wound, he said, take the heat out of the wound, and what is left? The light. And this season is about light. This season is saying what is emerging now is a new possibility. It is a season to not put upon our kids the concept of fear. They're in the school. The guns is not a new phenomenon for them. I mean, here in San Diego, Santee, what, 10 years ago we had a shooting in the school. They had it in Colorado. We had it in movie theaters. What we can give our kids rather than fear is a hope. What we can paint for them is a world that does work, not fill them with fear and anxiety and close them down. What the children need to do is believe in their heart and the vision which they have been given, and we will stand in awe of what it is that they can do in this world. But it is our responsibilities as their spiritual guardians to paint a picture that this is a good world world in which we live in, a blessed world, a world where there is kindness, a world where there is possibility, a world where there is far greater good than there are the atrocities that are going on right now, and that they are the messengers of what is possible in this world. Mm. Yeah. And it was Emerson who said, he who doesn't pause to stand in wonder and wrapped in awe might as well be dead with his eyes closed. When you experience the awe, it can be a transformational point that changes the whole experience in your life. I think one of our friends, Michael Beckwith, is the one who said, if you're not in awe, you're not paying attention. God is everywhere. It is omnipresent, even in the darkest spot. God is enough. That light is enough for us be able to bring forth into this world, but you've got to recognize that you can't take heaven by storm. Well, I'm going to show them how to be. No, that hasn't worked so far. It is not by might and it's not by power, is what Zechariah tells us. It is about opening up and being present for the presence of to have its way in your field of awareness and recognize that you're not going to get it with your intellect and with your mind. If you want an answer, if you want healing to take place of the magnitude of what our nation is going through, it is something that's got to happen through the heart. You know, we're in the era of a new kind of uh, uh, nervous system for our planet. And it's, we are interconnected through no longer the news media that is controlled, but through our social media. I found out all the news through the, the Twitter, the Facebook, the blogs, and what's going on. You find out through your smartphones and your iPads. There is a new nervous system that can give you the pulse of this planet. If you read what's there, there is pain, there is sadness, there is hope, there is possibilities. There are answers that can fill you with a sense of warmth and well-being. It's not something you can get with your mind. It is a whole being kind of experience that will fill you with awe. That was like so much power that is beyond what I can begin to comprehend that I cannot even begin to define it. This is a season of awe, some wonder. Allow yourself to be caught up in the awesome wonder of what is going on there, and you'll begin to see the blessings of God in ways you would never have experienced. Um, Linda Demeers, she was a fifth grade teacher, and she tells the story coming back from summer vacation. She first met Daniel, leaning in the door jam of her, her schoolroom, disheveled, messy hair, Tennis shoes, three sizes too large for his feet. Checkered pants with uh, tears in, in, in the knees. And he made a very uh, undistinguished entry into 
the fifth grade classroom of kids that come from a, a privileged lakeside neighborhood, basically white colonial houses and brass mail uh, boxes, and who have probably never seen ripped jeans in their life. And, um, and, but this kid was just so okay with who he is, um, a son of, a mig- of the migrant workers, just told them that he just came from the last town picking fruit, and that he didn't hear their snickers because he was just comfortable with who he was. And, and it wasn't until recess in the afternoon when they played a game of kickball that this Daniel, fifth grader, kicked that ball so far it was a home run that he gained the respect from the fifth grade wardrobe critics that were there. And all of a sudden, they were, hey, you know, maybe, maybe we should pay a little bit more attention. But then what happened next was Charles was up next. And, um, and Charles is described by Linda, the, the fifth grade teacher, probably as the most unathletic, overweight fifth grader in the history of the class. And, uh, and so the first two pitches, two strikes against him. And what Daniel did was unheard of. He walked up to Charles from behind and said, hey, you can do it. Don't listen to those other guys who are rolling their eyes or snickering or saying strange. It's okay. You can do it. You're a champ. You know? And all of a sudden, you could see Charles kind of stand up straight, lift his shoulders up, pick his head up, big smile on the face. The warmth returned to him, and he promptly proceeded to strike out. <laughs> But in that moment, things changed in that class. All of a sudden, Daniel became the go-to guy. All of a sudden, he became that magnet of the attraction. And um, by the end of fall, um, you know, he had taught those kids things in class th- that they would never have known, like how to call wild turkeys and, um, you know, how to know when fruit was ripe before you eat or how to be kind to people, you know, like Charles, you know, most of all. And the day before Christmas vacation came... All the kids bring their department store boxes of the fancy perfume and silks and leather uh, wallets to their teacher, and she sits there opening, ooh and ah. And after class, Daniel came up and leaned over and kind of whispered. He never called the kids by name. He called them kids, and he called the teacher Miss. He said, Miss, uh, the packing boxes came out last night, and um, we're leaving uh, tomorrow after school. And she was caught up with tears, and he was very unemotional about it. He pulled his gray rock out of his pocket and very, you know, uh, calculated. He slid it softly across her desk and just left it in front of her and said, I polished that rock special for you. Now, you know, opening fancy silks and perfume never prepared her for something quite like that. And, And with that, that was the last she ever saw of Daniel. And what's interesting is every Christmas, and this is almost like 20 years later, she says her daughter will come in and take the rock off her desk and say, Mom, will you tell me the story? And she always starts, well, I got this rock from Daniel a long time ago, long before you were born. And she finishes it off by saying, and I haven't seen him since, but... I hope, kid, wherever you may be, that you no longer need to have packing boxes in your life. Merry Christmas. You never know the impact that you're going to make if you're willing to be open and receptive in that place of awe and splendor. You may have your agenda. I don't know if any of you ever have agendas in your life. But, you know, I, this is how it's going to be. I've got this picture perfect in my mind, how it's supposed to be. And all of a sudden, you're inspired. Or life comes in, and it shakes it up. And all of a sudden, you're sliced and diced and spit out in an entirely different location. All of a sudden, all your wounds have been exposed, but it's really meant for them to be healed. All that you had planned have now been set aside by life, All of a sudden, the scenery has been messed up, and your world has been stirred up, and your perfect picture of how it was supposed to be, whether it was for Christmas, or whether it was in a classroom, or whether it was in life, all of a sudden, your picture has been messed up as if life showed up in your living room with big old boots caked with old mud all over your floor, absolutely making a mess to the point where what you want to do is run off with a cult, or, um, you know... uh, 
take up a new hobby like drinking or, uh, you know, just uh, run off with a guy from, or a gal from behind the deli counter or maybe just roll up and take a nap in an abandoned grotto for, say, 500 years or something. You know, you just had enough. But what I want you to get is you have got to learn to trust life more than your plans. You've got to learn to trust what is emerging in this new era, this new age, and this new light more than your perfect picture of how it is supposed to be. Do I create the room in my world to allow God to show up? Am I willing to stand in awe of that which is greater than my mind can figure out? Yeah, I'm sure you're going inside, right? Yeah, 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 that, that, that's it. Because I'll tell you what, if you're kicking and screaming and trying to deny that because your picture you're holding to that schedule or your plan what you're doing is throwing a tantrum and denying the birth of the greater possibility in your life you've got to be open you've got to be willing to be present for spirit to show up so you can go ah wow woo, woo is right spirit knows how to show up it knows how to show up story that touches my heart I see sometimes this time of year is about a, a town, small town in Pennsylvania. And um, th there was this uh, one family that put the menorah in their window. And this um, particular uh, woman, she came over, actually escaped from Russia as a little child with her mom during the Holocaust. And so she had that in her DNA, if you would, that kind of fear. And the third night on, of Hanukkah, some vandals came into the neighborhood with a baseball bat, broke her window, took the menorah, and smashed it down. Linda, Lisa Keenly, her neighbor, was coming back from church, or was at church, and she heard this story. And she was just appalled. They said, we're a small town with a diversity of, of spiritual and religious beliefs here. Nothing like that ever happens. What can I do? She had one of those awe moments. She said, you know what? I'm going to get a menorah. She asked her husband, said, hey, let's put a menorah in, in our window so if there was ever going to be, happen again, they would have to also include us. And the husband said, great, let's go for it. And so as she, Lisa was going to the store. She ran into another neighbor, uh, Margie Alexander, and said, hey, Margie, this is what I'm doing. And Margie was appalled as to what happened. said, hey, count me in. Get a menorah for me. And they told more people. And they went from several stores. They bought up all the menorahs on the you know, third night of Hanukkah. And, um, they, and the neighbors all put them in their window. And that evening, when this woman came driving home and she turned down her, the street in her neighborhood, what she saw were 18 houses flashing with the gold light of menorahs in their front window. As she wiped the tears off her eyes, she went to her house, picked up her smashed menorah, put in new light bulbs, and proudly put it back into her window. That's not awe-inspiring of what the human spirit is capable of. The human spirit is kind. The human spirit is caring. The human spirit wants to love. It wants to participate. When Elvis Presley used to say, when things go wrong, don't go with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to be able to take a stand like Daniel, who had enough confidence and faith in who he was that he could show up in a, a colonial neighborhood with torn pants and be strong and, and a positive expression in the world in which he walked. You know, but that takes your spiritual work. You know, people say, but Christian, you know, that, that spiritual talks you give on Sunday and, and the motivation, all that stuff, you know, it doesn't last. I say, well, neither does bathing, which is why I recommend you do it every day, you know? <laughs> every day, I encourage you to just pause and be with God. You know, if you were paying attention to God, you would be in awe. You would stand in wonder. 
And so I encourage us daily just to take the time to stop, to breathe, to allow yourself to connect with that divine vibration, that wonderful frequency, and be in that God presence. You're not trying to do anything. You're just being that, that wonderful divine vibration. You are that light in the midst of the darkness. This darkest time of the year, there is 100 million people supposedly on this planet celebrating the birth of of 2012, that this is the emergence of a positive new way of being in this world and that the crisis is the evolutionary driver and what we saw on Friday is part of the crisis that is appalling, unacceptable, that this cannot happen to our kids ever again and we're willing to stand up and say, you know what? Hey, we need to connect in a greater way, in a greater heart. There is a new nervous system. The newest fear is the global brain, but there is this new social connection that is our nervous system, is our heart, it is our soul. And among that are the kind things that are going out. What are you looking at? What are you feeding your mind? And what are you feeding our children? Are you giving them visions of hope? And the emergence of what is coming? Because there is so much good going on out there. And are you leaving space even beyond what it is you know? You know, to have the eyes of God, you can close your eyes and still see. The Spirit sees. Without ears, you can hear a spirit hears. You can know beyond what is knowable. When you enter into that divine frequency, that presence of God, where anything unlike it cannot remain, imagine if a holy nation united through love. You know, it's interesting, on the minister's listserv, you know, there's all sorts of prayers and things going on about what took place. And they have the list of everybody's names to pray. And one of the ministers came back and said, but the list is missing the perpetrator and his mom. I really know who I am so I can know who you are. Can I speak my word and be willing to have spirit take it to another level? Let go of my perfect picture for something greater to emerge. We are in a time of an emergence of something profoundly good. Something's lining up. And you can believe that and experience that. Or you could poo-poo it and say it's not so and not experience it. The choice is yours. The options are before you. But you're the one who has to believe. And it's a season of believing. That's for sure. And so with this whole kid thing going on, I came across a Christmas letter. I know I've read to you guys once, twice at least before. But I came across it and it's just, it touches my heart so I'm going to read it to you again. <laughs> it's kind of long, so relax. But anyway, it's a kid who wrote to Santa Claus what it is he wanted for Christmas. And then his dad, David, came back after he ate the cookies and, and drank the milk himself and said, Santa, this is my list for you. This is all I want for Christmas, is what dad said of this five-year-old kid. He said, Santa, let my little boy grow up still believing that he has the funniest dad in the neighborhood. <laughs> Give him many close friends, both boys and girls, and may they fill their days with adventure, security, and dirty fingernails. Leave his mom and me some magic dust that will keep him just the size he is now. We just as soon that he stay five years old and three feet four inches tall. And if he must grow up, Santa, make sure he still wants to sit on my lap at bedtime and read Frog and Toad together. And if you can help it, Santa, never let him be sent into war. His mother and I love our country, but we love our five-year-old boy even more. And while you're at it, would you give our world leaders a copy of Killer Angels, Michael Sarah's retelling of the Battle of Gettysburg? May it remind them that too many moms and dads have wept at Christmas for soldiers who died in battles that needn't have been fought. And let our house always be filled with the slamming doors and the toilet seats, which are the official sounds of little boys. And break it to him gently, Santa, that his dad won't always be able to carry him to bed at night or brush his teeth for him. And teach him the courage in the face of such change. Let him understand that no matter how nice you are to everyone, the world will sometimes break your heart. And as you know, Santa, child's feelings are fragile as moth's wings. And let him become a piano player, a soccer star, or a clergyman, or all three, anything but a politician. <laughs> 
Give him a hunger for books, music, and geography, and may he be the first kid in the kindergarten class to be able to find Madagascar on a map. The kid's a born artist, Santa, so send him crayons, and may our kitchen windows, refrigerators, and doors be ever plastered with the sketches of surreal rainbows and houses or horses with big ears. And steer him, oh, so carefully to that little girl destined to be his bride. And let his mother and me still be around when he walks her down the aisle. And if there is a just God, would you let her daddy be obscenely rich? (laughs) (laughs) Grant him a heart that he will cherish what his parents did right and forgive us for the mistakes we surely will have made over a lifetime of raising him. Hold him steady on the day that he learns the truth about you and the Easter Bunny. And may he take it, the news better than I did. And when you're flying around the heavens, Santa, make sure God has heard our prayers for this child. Lead our little boy not into temptation and deliver him from evil. Be careful out there, Santa, and close the flute on the way out. <laughs> and so it is a season to remember with that child kind of belief, the absolute awe of it all. And I thought I would just end with a picture of a child in awe. There's supposed to be a little sharper cue here. Yeah. I like me though. That was good. There we go. Oh, go. On. Hey. May you experience the awesome wonder of life. God bless you. I love you. Hey, let's keep going as we bring Michael Paul Smith back to our stage. Christmas time is here, happiness and cheer, fun for all that children call their favorite time of year, snowflakes in the air, carols everywhere. Olden times and ancient rhymes of love and dreams to share. Sleigh bells in the air, beauty everywhere. Yuletide by the fireside and joyful men. Such spirit through the Joyful memories there 
Michael Paul Smith. Beautiful. All right. Well, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our givingness and expression of our appreciation. Beautiful flowers today. I want to say thank you to Ann Hunter, who was at our first service. Uh, it's in recognition of her son, Alan, who made his transition a year ago. And uh, just she's appreciative of all the support that Seaside has given her. I mean, that's what Seaside is. It is community. We are here for one another, whether we are present or we go away, we come back. It is an ongoing place of light that reminds us. And in these times when our soul is shaken and we're brought to our knees looking for an answer, we come to Seaside. And maybe we hear something that becomes a, a kernel that allows that change to take place in, in your heart and your soul. And so I invite you to look within your heart and to feel the love you feel this day. Allow yourself to be in awe of God and grateful that it shows up in your life in this way as seaside and that you play an integral part in its uh, perpetuity, in its longevity, in its continuing to be here. We stand on the shoulders of those that sat here on Sunday mornings just like us, supporting it for this generation. And we do the same for our kids that are coming next. And so this is the time of the service. I say, listen to your heart and support spirit in your life that is showing up as seaside. And as you give, it comes back. It's not why you do it. It's an extension of your consciousness. It's allowing your heart to speak. Be able to give without strings, without expectations. You're just in that flow. So listen. I want to invite our ushers to come forward at this time and say thank you to this this wonderful crew, and, and thank you to all of, all of you in, in your givingness, those who mail in your contributions when you can't be here on a Sunday, or those that remember us with the auto tie, that regular systematic support to assist us with, I'll assure you, the regular financial obligations. I just say thank you from the fullness of my heart and gratitude for the most generous of spiritual communities that comes together to create a place where spirit is able to magnify and express itself in ever-expanding kinds of ways for the blessings of God is truly upon this moment. And it is a rich moment when there is a sense of security and a sense of peace, a sense of revelation, and you stand with a sense of awe that the world really is emerging to a greater place and that the challenges have been the evolutionary drivers for that emergence to that next place and that as we look around we see the children are leading us and that there is a new perspective and all of a sudden there is a sense of joy that returns and I know right now that we are living in an abundant universe in inexhaustible reservoir that is continuously pouring forth the rich blessings of life itself manifesting in our individual worlds in those ways that are relevant for us and so as each of us says yes to to being in the flow of life, what life pours forth is that greater flow until we say, well, that's enough. And so living as a transparency for that abundant flow of life, being the activity of God's abundance in our life, we send this forth, that which has blessed us, knowing it continues to bless those whom it comes in contact. It continues to ripple out and bring the richness to everyone it touches, which is many. I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this opportunity to pause and to remember the awe of it all. And so it is. Amen. And together, let us say the affirmation of our abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now.
guys from Seaside. Well, we stand in awesome appreciation for the abundance that flows through this spiritual community. For I stand with a grateful heart with the richness that has been poured forth, and I know that we pour forth this richness in the community in which we serve, knowing that this love and these blessings continue to go out and touch many, many lives. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for using each of us in this moment for this ever-expanding wellspring of abundance. And so it is. Amen. Can you? <laughs> no falling. That's Trudy. That's your board president. So. So let's see, a lot's going on uh, at Seaside. Big night Wednesday night here is uh, a celebration of 10 years of Tammy's Wednesday night expression. She's passing the t baton on uh, to Reverend Sunshine in January. And so Friday, uh, Wednesday night, it will be a big celebration as she wraps up her tenure with the Amazing Grace. We're going to, I don't know if we're going to roast her or what, but I'm planning to be here for sure. So... Also, Friday night, you know where I'm planning to be, right here at this uh, drumming circle to um, participate in the solstice celebration and the completing of that fractal part of time and uh, ushering in uh, the new one. So, uh, celebrating that. Uh, next Sunday night, I want to remind you, is the candlelight service right here at Seaside. It is always a fun celebration. It's not one of those stuffy, real classy kind of ones. It's more like show up in sweaters. It's our Seaside's living room. We're sitting around the fireplace, singing together, laughing together, and uh, sharing and uniting our light for the world uh, to experience. So, lots going on. New Year's... Uh, um, or Christmas Day here, Vivian, who usually hosts our, can, uh, our Christmas um, uh, dinner or lunch, um, it will be out of the hospital, she assures me, but probably not in the shape to organize the day. So uh, we're looking for some individuals to help make sure that flows a little smoother, um, and we'll hold her in prayer. New Year's Eve, uh, Dr. Christina is doing the burning bowl, so there's a lot of fun activities Santa's going to be here on next Sunday night, so if you guys want to come and sit on Santa's lap, maybe get a candy cane, tell Santa what you want, it's the happening place, so it's good. Hey, Rue, how much longer are you around? From Australia, going to college, back home here. Tuesday, wow, well, we love you, our love goes with you, that's for sure, so. Okay, well, let's pray. Healing's the thrust of this movement since its conception. Um, healing is where we go when the appearances seem other than uh, one of ease and grace. And so I invite you to open your hearts with me at this time and know truly that this is a moment where each of us has the opportunity to experience that which is more than our mind knows. I want to invite any of our religious science practitioners to stand and all of us just to feel this upliftment of consciousness as they physically stand up, can feel this upliftment of thought, of possibility, of the infinite grace, the spirit that moves. Come to know your experience as that God vibration, that divine frequency where there is no otherness, where there is no separation, there is only that true alignment with that that heart center, that God center of one's being, and it is in that place anything unlike it naturally falls away. I need not tell God, that intelligence that guides the universe, what to do in my life. All I need to do is open up and listen to that which is mine to do. And it's in that flow that spirit prospers its expression as our individual lives. It's within that expression that healing happens in the physical body. It's within that expression that the intimacy and the honesty and the love is expressed at a deep level. And healing takes place because it is the natural unfoldment of spirit. I stand in awesome wonder of the presence of God manifesting in the ways that are relevant within our lives. I know every prayer in our prayer request chest is answered and it is filled with requests for divine right action and love and light. Sunny Hook, over in Connecticut, that right there in the midst of that community, may they feel the love that is pouring out from this place at this time, that's pouring forth from our nation, that is uniting this planet for many portals of spiritual expression and just loving and holding those children and adults that stepped over to the other side this week as leaders for a new consciousness to emerge, a new life to emerge, free of violence, where the vision and the possibilities and the hope reign supreme. 
in a world that works for everyone, where the children's creativity is encouraged, that unique expressions of life that you find just leaning in your doorway as you show up one day is welcomed as a diverse part of family. For I know that the celebration on the 21st is the beginning of the emergence of a positive world that shares the good news, that expresses the light, where there is love and kindness that prevails upon this planet. And where there is conflict, there is now understanding and resolution. For the higher picture calls all to step forward. The children remind us of why this is important. I say thank you. Thank you. I live in a state of gratitude and appreciation for the shift that takes place and beyond words, but my heart is open, my soul is receptive, and I begin to understand and my pain begins to heal. The anger subsides as well as the tears. And what remains is a welcoming place for God to personalize the revelation. And I stand in awe of that which I am, that you are which is God expressing, so it is. Ooh, there was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. I did not know the love of God was at hand. But now I can say you are discouraged and trying to make it through just one more. You gotta let it go Let it all go And this is what we have to say Come on! I release and I let go I let the Spirit run my life and my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God You know there's no more struggle No more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God You know I release and I let go Let the Spirit I believe in awe in my life. Together, I believe in awe in my life. Again, I believe in awe in my life. One more time. 
I believe in awe in my life. Then our song of grace. <laughs> I'm living in love, I'm living in peace, I'm living my life for what I believe. Through joys and through fears, in this world I walk, God's grace shines on me and shines on us all. We are living in grace, we are living We are living in grace. We're living in love. We're living in peace. United we stand as one family. We honor our truth as together we walk. God's grace moves through me and moves through us all. Amen. Hallelujah.